Hi, welcome to another tutorial of MySQL uh, replication and today we will be discussing about the uh, new feature which has been uh, uh, like which has been introduced in uh, after MySQL 5.6 and now it has be, it has changed uh, the way uh, we used to uh, enable our uh, MySQL replication. So today we will be studying about uh, gtids which is called uh, uh, global transaction identifier uh, what is a gtid uh, as i said it stands for the global transaction identifier uh, which is uniquely identifies uh, a transaction committed to the server of origin master a unique gtid is created when any transaction occurs uh, the gtid is not just unique uh, to the server on which it originated but also across all the uh, like sir all the slaves or you can say the replica you have so in other words um, uh, each transaction is mapped uh, to a gtid so uh, this is the thing and uh, this is the behavior of having all the uh, transaction like all the gtids uh, same across all the server uh, this has made uh, this thing unique because this help us uh, in uh, like uh, like uh, configuring our uh, master and slave uh, topology where we don't need to uh, we don't we don't uh, we don't require uh, like uh, what is the position till uh, i have uh, uh, from like from which uh, position i have to start my replication uh, because previously we, you know that we have to uh, identify our positions and uh, binary log file as well so for after this uh, having everything uh, same across uh, across the servers we don't require any uh, thing about the binary log position and all that so gtid is used to replace uh, the classic copy method uh, instead of using the binary log plus position to start copying instead of uh, what you guys need to do is that just use the uh, master auto position equal to one uh, and to automatically match the GTID breakpoints for the replication that is the like the easiest thing it has been introduced till now so uh, so as I told you that uh, it started on 5.6.5 uh, and then now till the, uh, MySQL 8.24 and I think uh, 25 is also online now uh, so now they are keep improving it so uh, as I told you that on the traditional side uh, slave side bin log does not need to be uh, turned on but GTID okay so but uh, on the slave side you don't need, don't need that but if you want uh, you can go for the slave update and in case you are going for the change replication uh, then you have to uh, enable the binary logs and uh, log slave update uh, on the uh, intermediate uh, master okay so what are the components and how does uh, the gtid uh, looks like so uh, there are two parts uh, the front one is the server uid uh, okay and after that you will have the sequence number if you see here uh, starting from this 7 to uh, 5a uh, and then we have colon uh, 10 uh, this is in a, uh, combined all together is called a gtid and the first part is the server uid uh, which is always unique id to each server and you can find this by this uh, variable uh, select at uh, server underscore uid okay uh, and uh, you can also find this uh, server uid inside the world lib mysql auto.cnf file uh, you can find your server id in th there as well for each server uh, this server uid is always uh, unique uh, and obviously uh, every sequence number is unique so that is why uh, the gtid is always unique from the other one okay uh, so uh, in case uh, uh, if you have uh, cloned the server uh, okay uh, let's say you have mysql one server and then you try to clone that virtual machine and uh, start your another virtual machine uh, and if mysql is already installed obviously you will have everything will be same so you have to uh, you need to have the different server uid and as i told you that it is available inside the auto.cnf what you guys need to do is that delete this auto.cnf and uh, restart your mysql server mysql will automatically create this auto.cnf file uh, here uh, and uh, then uh, you can have a different uh, uuid okay uh, yes yeah, so next one we have uh, what are the advantages of gtid over traditional replication as i told you a uh, simple implementation for failover uh, let's say your slave got uh, failed uh, sorry the master got failed uh, and then you have let's say four or five mysql uh, uh, let's say you have four or five uh, 
slave and then uh, in case you want to have uh, another master so what you guys need to do is you don't need to have uh you don't need to oh, have like uh, what, what are the binary log files what are the position uh so all you need to do is that uh like uh, auto start position equal to one and this one uh, master auto position is equal to one and then you have to, you can start your replication uh, uh it is safer than traditional copying uh, obviously gtd is continuous without holes so when there is a data conflict between the master and the slave uh libraries or you can say uh uh, schemas uh, you can skip it by adding the empty transaction as well uh, let's say uh, this was my topology a master and a slave b and a slave a suddenly the master a uh, fails so what i have to do is that i want to make my slave b as a master of uh, a now slave a uh, so all you need to do is that uh, change master to master host and then i obviously i have to find the master log files at the uh, slave b and the log position as well on the slave uh, b and then only i can uh, like make my uh, server b as a master of uh, server a okay uh, next we have is the advantages of uh, like still the gtid but uh, what happens here uh, if you have gtid enabled then uh, how you can change it let's say master a got failed and we have now master uh, slave b and slave a and i want my slave a uh, to be the slave of uh, b so slave b will be the master what i need to do is to change master master host is equal to slave b and r2 position equal to one that's it the slave a will automatically know that what are the transaction i have executed and what I need from the master slave b uh, which is the current master and it will automatically recognize all the position everything uh, and it will start the uh, slave okay uh, so how gtid helps as i told you without gtid all master slave generate different binary log files and let's say we have an event on the master uh, let's say it is one two three four five so obviously it is not going to be the same on all the uh, on all the other slave so events are the same uh, in the same order uh, but uh, just without different offsets so offset will be different obviously um, but with gtid every transaction has a unique identifier uh, which identifies in the same way as uh, every master and the slave connect to the replication topology so every everywhere it will be same so no go, no longer you need to know the binary of file position and uh, file in the position so only you need to know the identifier of the transaction like uh, which is my um, server how you enable uh, the gtid obviously you need to uh, have the gtid equal to on and you need uh, uh, to enable the uh, enforce gtid consistency what is does that it prevent uh, executing the non-transactional safe test statements like create table and select statement uh, create a temporary table and sign transaction okay everything will be inside the transaction and um, you have to have uh, binary log enabled on the master server as well uh, server id uh, should be different on both sides uh, yes obviously uh, it should be there and as i told you earlier if you have cloned it you need to delete your auto config on the slave and restart your server uh, and it will come up with a different uid next we have is uh, the tables and the variables are involved uh, mysql have a table uh, which is called uh, gtrd executed uh, it's available inside the schema uh, mysql uh, gtrds are stored in in a table named gtrd executed uh, in the mysql database uh, a row in this table contains of each gtrd or set of gtrd that represents okay and the uid of the originating server and starting and the end in transaction ids of the set so this uh, these are the values which are required uh, if any uh, startup happening or restart is happening so from here uh, if the uh, like from here uh, the mysql can know that what is happening and how much i have and how much to recover so uh, gtid are store in obviously the table uh, where gtid mode is on uh, or on permissive okay so in this uh, condition uh, the gtid uh, are stored inside this gtid executed table uh, what is the gtid purged uh, variable uh, transaction have been purged from the binary log let's say you have purged the binary log and all the whatever, whatever uh, till the gtids uh, have been executed and those were inside the binary logs which you have purged or, or expired so that will be that that value will be in stored inside the gtid purge then we have gtid executed uh, let's say the slave went or on the master as well uh, any uh, transaction which is executed on the master or 
it was replicated to the uh, slave so you can tell there as well that these are the uh, gtid which have been executed gtid next uh, the next value of the next transaction obviously uh, that is what it going to define okay uh, so few things uh, what happened uh, on the back end of the gtid uh, let's say uh, if the binary log is enabled then how the how what is happening so if the binary log is enabled uh, after uh, mysql uh, version 8.0.17 uh, for the InnoDB storage engine only uh, the server updates the mysql gtid uh, executed table in the same way as when binary logging or replica update logging is disabled okay storing the gtid for each transaction at transaction commit time however in releases before mysql 8.0.17 and for other storage engine the server only updates the mysql gtid tables when the binary log is rotated or server is shut down so and now uh, it is done after the commit transaction is committed uh, these uh, gtid table uh, will be updated before for mysql uh, 8.0.17 the gtid executed table will only be executed if the if the server restart or the binary log is rotated and uh, let's say uh, if it is off the binary log is off um, then uh, or on the slave side if you have a uh, log replica updates or you can say the old uh, variable we call it uh, log slave update is disabled then the server stores the gtid uh, belonging to each transaction together with the transaction in the mysql executed table at transaction commit okay so whatever uh, it is if it is off then whenever the transaction is committed it will be uh, stored inside the gtid executed table okay so what happened uh, if uh, like at the event when the mysql uh, server uh, is stopped unexpectedly or any mishap like a shutdown happens so uh let's say in the event if server stopping unexpectedly uh, the set of gtids from current binary log files is not saved in the mysql gtid executed table these gtids are added to the table from the binary log file during the recovery so that replication can continue the exception uh, to this is if you disable the binary logging when the server is restarted like using uh, skip log binary log or disable bin log so in that case the server cannot access the binary log file uh, to recover the gtid so replication cannot be started so this is how uh, uh, things happens when like the server is stopped unexpectedly okay so what is the gtid life cycle when the master updates the data, uh, it will generate the GTID before the transaction is recorded in the binary log. Yes, uh, and the IO thread on the slave side writes the changes to binary log, all the local relay log uh, that is defined. Uh, and the SQL uh, thread obtains the GTIDs from the relay log and then compares where uh, there is record in the binary log, uh, like the bin log on the slave side. Uh, if there is a record, uh, it means the GTID transaction has been executed and the slave will ignore it. Uh, if there is no record, the slave will execute the GTID uh, transaction from the relay log and record it inside its own binary log. Uh, so, uh, slave does not generate GTID, uh, obviously, uh, since the GTID is not empty because if you see here, uh, like, like uh, this variable, the GTID next is not empty here. So that is why it's not going to generate its own. So slave will not try to generate new GTID for the transaction, but read the GTID value from the GTID next and write it into the binary log to identify the GTID value of transaction. That is why all the transaction, all the GTID's values are the same across uh, all the topology okay so all the slave or all the master and the slave inside the replication topology because we have a gtid next variable uh, which tells which uh, transition to execute and which value to store inside your gtid executed variable so uh, in the parsing process it will be judged whether there is a primary key if not uh, use a secondary index if not then use a full index uh, how you can add in, uh, like uh, define uh, which algorithm to use uh, there is a variable uh, slave rows search algorithms uh, from there you can use it okay uh, the mysql 8 use index scan and hash scan before it is different uh, it is also go for the full scan as well but from mysql 8 uh, they have removed it 
I don't know which version but the current I'm using 23 so it's not this is the value inside the index scan and hash scan inside the uh, MySQL version 23 okay so furthermore about the GTID set in the GTID purge uh, this is a variable uh, which contains a GTID of all the transaction that has been committed on the server okay but does not uh, uh, exist in the binary log file on the server because those binary logs has been purged okay so the current binary logs will not have these values okay so when the server starts it will initialize the gtid purged and uh, the okay uh, this is the gtid set uh, in the system variable each uh, binary log file starts with the event uh, previous gtid log uh, event which contains the gtid set in all the previous binary log files uh, consisting of gtid in all the previous uh, gtid logs events of the previous file and the gtid of uh, each gtid log event uh, in itself uh, this contents uh, like the previous uh, uh, like sorry the content of the previous gtid log event uh, in the oldest uh, binary log file is used to initialize the gtid purge uh, set when the server starts uh, and to maintain the set uh, when uh, clearing the binary log so this tell is like uh, these are the gtid uh, log events inside the bi previous binary log file at the start of the header so now i have this and you can uh, like uh, remove this so like for the safety purpose they use the gtid purge uh, value uh, i think uh, i may say that this might not uh, make sense to you guys but uh, stay calm read this uh, powerpoint uh, and you, it will make sense for you and uh, thank you for uh, watching this one and now let's move on to uh, how to uh, like uh, configure the gtid replication uh, so see you in the next one